right now the department does not have any activities for EMP hardening. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. And then, Madam Chair, just one question that I'd like to pose to Ms. Uh, Ferlaney, and maybe she could submit it into uh, the record in a written format. Uh, but just uh, the same question I posed to the panel earlier as far as the lack of standards that do exist uh, for platforms from a cybersecurity perspective or some of the uh, data systems that exist for uh, energy companies, should some standards be included there? What's the department looking at um, in order to be able to facilitate or respond to some of those questions or however they evaluate them? Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you. We'll do that. I now recognize the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Austria, for questions. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. And let me, I will keep my remarks brief. I know we have votes going on right now. Um, but I think we all agree here today in this, this panel that the electric grid remains highly vulnerable to a cyber and physical attack that could possibly disable a wide portion of the grid for weeks, months, and even possibly years. And as we move into the 21st century, it's moving towards new technology, uh, and we push towards making uh, electri electric uh, infrastructure electronic and digital, on the one hand, we're saving money, uh, billions of dollars possibly, and we're making it much more quicker, much more reliable, a much more reliable system. But on the other hand, we're also creating uh, cyber and, phys uh, and physical uh, vulnerable, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable, making vulnerable. And the word won't just come out. <laughs> we're becoming more vulnerable. And I'm not, and I'm concerned that we don't have a comprehensive plan in place or that protection in place right now. Um, you know, today most of the critical electric infrastructure is owned and operated by the private sector. Uh, regulators of the electric grid currently have limited authority and require the, uh, these electric utilities to secure their systems uh, against cyber and physical attacks. And, and, and this uh, hearing has been very informative and eye-opening. And, and just to recap on a couple things, I want to ask uh, Mr. McClellan first and recap on what the ranking member started to go down this route as far as, uh, first of all, what, what should utilities do to better identify those critical cyber assets that are out there? And then, you know, the, the question has come up multiple times as far as incentives. You know, should there be is, is statutory requirements necessary to, to give, have the, to be that, you know, put those incentives in place to move that direction? Uh, I'll start starting with the, uh, the identification, identification of critical assets, which, you know, subsequent comes the identification of critical cyber assets, which then puts those facilities under the SIP standards. Uh, NERC itself has begun the process to rectify this, this problem. Um, the, the amount of critical assets that were identified was low, and so Mr. Asante, who was on the prior panel, wrote a letter to industry saying, hey, rather than assume that your one particular facility in isolation on the whole power grid is not critical, you need to start from the assumption that you, can, you have to justify that it isn't critical. In other words, you have to opt it out of the mix. NARC is also preparing a guidance document to help entities review and aggregate what everyone else is doing, a guidance document to uh, identify critical assets. And finally, when the commission approved the SIP standards, the commission identified this as a deficient area and said that it's not going to work if the utilities that are under regulation get to identify what is a critical asset, a critical cyber asset, and what isn't. Therefore, the commission directed the ERO to rewrite the standards and bring the standards back to the commission in that th from that point on, from the time the standards will be revised, there will be a regional review process, and then those determinations will be subject to the Commission's review. Unfortunately, it's going to use a standards development process, which can take years for it to get through, ballot through, and then come back to the Commission, and it may not be entirely responsive to the Commission's mm -hmm. directive. That's the process under Federal Power Act 250. Thank you, and I appreciate that. And from, because of time constraints, let me ask Ms. Hoffman and get your perspective on uh, since, you know, as Acting Assistant Secretary for the uh, electric, Electricity Delivery and Energy uh, Reliability, uh, DOE, ha having a, you know, as a specific sector agency for en the energy sector, um, are you getting uh, industry member cooperation for developing risk management uh, strategies and implementing uh, security measures to protect their uh, critical infrastructures? My apologies. We are getting cooperation. We have focused on the vendor communities. We have taken several different approaches to looking at security improvements within the sector, working with the vendors and working with the um, electric or energy companies directly in uh, 
assessing the technology for vulnerabilities, as well as improving the technology. Okay. Madam Chair, I'm going to yield back my time because I know we have votes. We all we don't want to miss a vote. Well, I, I want to thank each of you for your valuable testimony here today. And I want to thank the members for their questions. Mr. Bartlett, thank you for your, your wisdom on this, on this matter. And also let the members of the subcommittee know that you, may, you have additional questions for the witnesses. Uh, we'll ask for you to respond. Uh, you can submit them and we will get it to you. And we ask that you will respond to us expeditiously in writing to those questions. Um, hearing no further business, I want to thank you once again for your testimony here today. Um, I know that there is a lot, of, um, a lot of inquiry coming from the membership with regard to this matter, a, a lot of interest and concern. And so this is probably, probably what we would call part one of what will be uh, a number of other hearings around this matter uh, during this session. So I want to thank you and just alert you to that. Uh, uh, this meeting is adjourned.